Hello and welcome to the Night Vision Show. In this week's episode, Northern Ireland pro staffer Cathal shows us how to make a bait station to draw in a problem fox. Also, Tim from Scott Country talks about thermal ghosting and issues we sometimes see on older units. But first, pro staffer Thomas is back in the Forest of Dean with a fancy new trail camera that lets him see where the boar are. One thing I want to talk about is the new Hick Micro M15 trail cam. Now, as many people know, I'm a big fan of trail cams. Um, I think they're absolutely brilliant. It completely changes uh, your results on the job. If, if you're doing it, if you're doing it for results, um, if you've got animals that you need to uh, control. Um, or even if you just need to know what's going on. The ability to know what's going on on your ground when you're not there, for me, is a very important factor. Now, I've got other different cameras myself, personally, but they're good cameras, never had a problem with them. As soon as I got my hands on this, uh, it was a bit of a different ball game, really. Um, the image quality on the Hick Micro M15 is second to none. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. It's got a 1080p uh, camera and it's got an 82 feet detection range which is handy um, you can set sensitivity levels uh, basically you download an app and all your photos come through that like a text message would um, and the second something walks past it and sets sensors it off because it's motion sensored um, it'll just send the photo through it's absolutely brilliant very efficient um, i can keep an eye on what deer are in the area um, what they're feeding on i can see what boar are coming in what time they're coming in and it just makes life so much easier now um it's a one of the many benefits of technology changing um this camera has a brilliant the antenna on it's enormous one thing i always struggle with is signal especially in the forest of dean signal is terrible um you barely get any phone signal anywhere um especially um one of these cameras but this is absolutely brilliant um can't fault it it's really easy to set up um it's just it's just that's what it does, says on the tin. Um, brilliant bit of kit. And for the price, um, Scott Country is selling them, I believe, for $164.99. Um, it's very competitive in the market, and the pricing of the photographs is very competitive too. So hopefully, I'm going to put some bait out now, and it's quite early, so we're going to go out and see if we can get a, uh, a row before dark. And then once the bait's out, because um, they're coming in this place anyway it's a friend of mine's little woodland and he's got a field next door and they live they're living in this woods at the moment uh, a bit further up and basically they're making their way down into his field and he doesn't want that if they stayed in here it would have been fine but they're not sadly so i'm going to put some bait out go and see this ro some roebuck and then hopefully if the camera goes off i'm only down the road anyway so we'll whiz on over and see if we can get ourselves a boar or two Tim from Scott Country National. What I'm going to talk to you today about is a common thing that a lot of our customers uh, phone up and say their thermal spotter or their scope is really granularly or I'm getting a mirrored image. It's a term referred to as ghosting. Now there's three settings you can have your uh, spotter or scope onto. That's manual, semi-automatic and automatic. Now we strongly recommend that you keep it on automatic for optimum performance. But should you need to manually calibrate your uh, device, you can turn it into manual, close the lens cap, hit the power button, it'll manually calibrate, you'll be able to open that up, up again and you'll have a clearer image. However, in semi-automatic or automatic, 
if you do it in semi-automatic, you can still uh, you can still cal calibrate it when you choose, but it will automatically do that within the automatic mode. You'll get the countdown, and it will do it to give you the optimum picture. Now, if you get this term that people refer to as ghosting, and you're not getting a good calibration, that's when your shutter is on its way out, and that device will need to be returned for repair. So, stink pipes, base stations, whatever you want to call them, probably the best and most effective way of controlling foxes in a very vast, very vast area. Myself here, I've got a very hilly ground, a uh, lot of sheep, a lot of cattle, a lot of wild pheasants, and of course a little duck pond we have ourselves here. So I want to try and control the fox numbers as best I can. Obviously it's not as easy done, no matter what thermal gear, night vision gear we have out there, Scar Country has to offer. It's not going to bring the foxes as five fields away any closer. So, this is where this little idea comes in. Little base station, as you can see at the bottom, a little small square, clear to the bottom, and on the back, two holes, top and bottom, which is going to come into effect later on once I show you how to set it up. Pretty simple, nothing really complex about it. Bit of PVC piping that I found a construction job there recently. We're going to, what we're going to, the idea is that we're going to tie this around a post somewhere with a backstop, somewhere where I'm going to be sitting, waiting for that fox to come. Then we're going to put down any carcasses, as we're well aware, duck season is on well underway now in September and it's coming up now to October so the pheasants and everything else will be starting. So duck season now we had a very 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 successful morning on September the 1st. My father and myself had a very good morning so I have with me the duck carcasses with me so the meat, legs and breasts have been taken out vacuum packed and in the freezer ready for the barbecue this weekend as well as the feathers have been taken away as well as the wings have been taken away. The reason the feathers and wings are taken off I use the feathers for the flight hand and I use for the wings, I use for dummies, for dogs, down the lane, for training puppies, whether it be myself or friends as training dogs. So nothing's ever wasted. All that's ever I have with me is just the carcass, just a plain old carcass, but it's going to be a great job for this. So let's get it set up. So as I say, there's nothing ready to the setup. All you're going to need is a drill for bone holes that I'm always going to show you, little comb bit, bio cable ties, and obviously your PVC paping. There's a little better look now at the square. Let's cut at the bottom and explain all once we get set up and obviously the bio carcasses is going to go into it. So setting up a base station is pretty simple. One thing you remember, make sure and put down low. As you can see we're in an elevated position at the moment. I'm going to head down to this corner to put the base station out. Number two, make sure you get farmer's permission before you do anything. 100% check with the farmer. And number two, make sure you don't put into a field where it's going to be cattle and sheep in. You don't want rotten carcasses in the same field that cattle and sheep are in. That's just going to ask them for trouble. And number three, Make sure don't put it anywhere near any waterways, whether it be a stream, river, lake. You don't want nothing contaminating water or you being the cause of something. So just be smart about it and make sure you set up in somewhere where it's out of the road, hidden, only you know where it's going to be at. And obviously the fox is going to know where it's at. So, before I go and cable tie this to exactly where I want to put it, first thing I want to do is going to bore a couple of holes here. Just up around the front of it and up around the side of it. main reason for that is let the smell out send all those foxes in. So I'm gonna start with this little comb bit here. It's only a 20 mil because it's a 20 mil comb bit. Just quite little holes. have it, something simple, just like a little bit of, best way to describe it is like cheddar cheese, leave a couple of holes in it, doesn't matter what size they are, as long as they're not big enough that the fox can pull the meat out through. That's why I haven't cut the square that big at the bottom, it's just enough to keep the fox here, eating at the base station while I'm sitting away, get myself ready for a perfect shot. So yeah, this case good onto the post. So there you are, base station is now set up, ready to go. Put the ducks in there, so it's ready now, I just have to go and put the top on it now, and that's it, I'll walk away. I'll leave it now for a couple of weeks before I come back again, just to check up on it, try and let my scent die on it, There's obviously hand it with no gloves and nothing like that. And then let the foxes get used to it as well. I'm going to keep baiting it and keep baiting it, and then once the foxes find it, then I'll be setting up the Hick Micro M15 trail camera to keep a good eye on it, and letting me know as to when the foxes are showing up. Hopefully you learned something from this. As I say, there's going to be plenty of videos like this, little how-to videos here. 
at the night vision show so make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit leave a like leave a comment as to maybe what you want to see if you want something you want us to test out and make sure you head over to youtube which you're probably already on head over to tiktok facebook and all our other social medias and make sure you follow us there for a lot more contact cheers